Hello, Paradise Panther artists. I am Mrs. Telfer, and I am excited to be with you today as we introduce our next master artist, Rembrandt von Rijn. Rembrandt was a Dutch artist who was born over 400 years ago. He was known as a master at using light and shadow in his artwork. Also, when he was young, he liked to make lots of silly faces in the mirror and then he would go paint himself. We're gonna be looking at several of his self-portraits today. So try to imagine what kinds of silly faces do you think he made while he was looking in the mirror? Let's go ahead and get started and learn a little bit more about our master artist, Rembrandt. Did you imagine any of these faces? I would describe these expressions as angry, mad, mean, surprised, or funny. I can imagine young Rembrandt trying out different faces in a mirror and then doing this self-portrait. As a young man, he was like an actor practicing before a mirror. He wanted simply to learn all about making a face to show different feelings. He was not shy and quiet, and it shows in his self-portraits. Raise your hand if you have a guess as to how many self-portraits Rembrandt did during his lifetime. Go ahead and raise a quiet hand and your teacher will call on you. Rembrandt did more than 90 self-portraits. We can learn a lot about him by seeing how he looked at himself as a teenager to an old man. Rembrandt studied his face many, many times to see how his eyebrows came together and how his jaw pushed forward. He started his many self-portraits at a young age. You might wonder, why did he paint himself? Well, he probably simply needed a model and no one else was around. His father was working in the mill, his mother was at church, and his sister was in the kitchen. Besides, with himself as the model, he could do anything he pleased. Perhaps a friend or relative would not agree or might felt embarrassed at making all those silly faces. Rembrandt's father owned a windmill, like the one you see here in this artwork by Rembrandt. Windmills were, and still are, very common in Holland. People either lived next to them or even inside them. Windmills were very important to grind up grains for food. In your art activity with Mr. Tyler, you will be drawing a realistic windmill. All his life, Rembrandt worked very hard at showing feelings with his art. This at first meant making faces, surprised, upset, or snarling. But as he grew older, he changed, both in the way he looked on the outside and in the way he felt inside. Let's look at a self-portrait he made at the age of 54. I'm wondering if it will look different. Let's find out. Let's look at the differences from the last self-portrait of Rembrandt where he was making all those different funny faces. Here, Rembrandt looks older, more serious, maybe tired or sad. When this was painted, Rembrandt was 54 years old and a lot of sad things had happened to him. That's why he looks so serious and sad. But let's go back to when he was a young artist and let's find out how he became famous. Rembrandt's family was large 
and they lived in Holland, which is across the Atlantic Ocean in Europe. When he grew up, he left his family to live in the city of Amsterdam. While living in Amsterdam, almost every day, rich people came to Rembrandt's door, asking him to paint their portrait. They knew this new artist was very talented at capturing how one really looked. In two years, he became the most popular painter in Holland. He was only 28 years old. As order after order poured in, soon he became as rich as the people he painted. Go ahead and raise your hand if you like to dress up and pretend you are someone else for Halloween. Please raise a quiet hand. Great, I bet there are many hands raised around your room. You can go ahead and put your hands down now. Well, guess what? Rembrandt loved to dress up too. Rembrandt had a whole room in his big house full of all kinds of robes, capes, hats, swords, and helmets for his clients and his models to choose from when they sat for paintings. Rembrandt also liked spending his money on finery for himself, such as fancy hats and coats and big chains to wear. His self-portrait shows an artist all decked out in rich clothing, looking very sure of himself as one of Holland's most successful artists. He was only 28 years old when his popularity took off and lasted throughout most of his life. Look carefully here at what this woman is holding in her dress and what decorates her hat. We can see flowers and leaves in her hat, as well as down here in her skirt. Spring is the season of the year when green leaves and pretty flowers first grow and bloom. This portrait is showing a good friend dressed up to be Flora, the goddess of spring, a make-believe queen of spring. Notice the flowers in her right hand, right here. These are taken from the ones that are in her skirt, which she holds like an apron. Now, look closely and tell me what part of the painting is touched brightly with a golden light. Raise your hand and your teacher will call on you. Which part looks like it is touched with a golden light? We can see golden light on her sleeves, here on her sleeves, as well as a golden light on her dress, right in here. That golden light which shines on her face and her clothing is one of the ways you can tell that Rembrandt was the artist. Notice how the background is not very light. Look here at the background. It is darker. Rembrandt was very talented at using light against dark. He did this to show highlights and shadows. In this next portrait, Rembrandt poses a man in a costume. Go ahead and think in your head, what do you think he will be dressed up as? This man is wearing a type of ruler or a king costume. I'm wondering if he really is a king from a faraway place or if he is just pretending. 
Here is a good view of some of the robes and jewelry that Rembrandt had for his clients and models to wear. Look at the rich looking fabric and the shining gold. Here, we can also see his use of golden light against the dark background again. Watch as I highlight the golden light that shines on this side of the man's face and head and shoulder. Contrasted with a dark background and darkness on the other part of his body. In this painting, look for that special Rembrandt light against dark. We see that golden light in, and watch as I show you, the golden light in the two men in the front here, the little girl in a bright light towards the back, and the other faces in the background, you can see have a golden light to them as well. He brings that special glowing light out of the shadows to highlight those parts. This painting is titled The Night Watch and is one of Rembrandt's most famous masterpieces. Now, let's pretend it is time for your class to have their photograph taken. I bet that you want to look good in your picture. Then you would want to hire the best photographer to take your picture, and then you would pay for your pictures. That's just what some men did in the year 1640. They were all together in a group in the army, and they wanted their picture done. But this was before the camera had been invented, so a picture had to be painted by an artist. Since they wanted an excellent portrait, they decided to hire the most popular portrait painter in Holland. And who do you think that would be? Well, Rembrandt, of course. They had seen his other group portraits and they could tell exactly who each person in the picture was meant to be. Rembrandt agreed to paint their group portrait and the men were quite excited. They made sure their uniforms were clean and their boots were polished. They posed patiently, looking handsome in their uniforms. Then they waited two years to see the finished picture and their excitement turned to disbelief at what they saw. If you had paid the artist and posed for him for many tiring hours, I bet you would be upset if your face didn't even show in the painting. Let's look here at how this man's arm is outstretched and blocking the face of another man just to the left of him. Remember, this is a company of army men, so no one could understand why Rembrandt added 16 imaginary figures to the picture. Let's look now at this little girl in Rembrandt's painting. Rembrandt shone his special light on the little girl, and it made her stand out even more than some of the army men. I bet the men did not like that. We call that special light and the opposite dark space highlight and shadow. Rembrandt must have been bored with the idea of an ordinary group portrait with everyone lined up. So he decided to do something different. Instead of painting the men standing and looking at him, he chose to show them in action 
at the moment that their captain had given them orders to march. Look at how some of them look as if they don't know what to do or where to go. Everyone is moving in different directions. Now, let's look at the last group portrait that Rembrandt painted 20 years later. Here we see a group of businessmen and leaders. They are five leaders of the cloth makers group and their president asked Rembrandt to paint a group portrait. So Rembrandt put aside his self portraits and pictures of Bible stories and set a fresh canvas on his easel. This was painted 20 years after he finished The Night Watch. Now, let's look as we find the man who is the servant and not the leader. We see him here. He is the one behind the others and he is not wearing a hat. Notice how it seems that the men are looking out at the artist or out at us. By painting it this way, we get the feeling that we have just walked in on their meeting and they all look up to see who is entering the room. It seems as if they will soon turn back to their work. Rembrandt was very smart to make us feel a part of the picture in this way. Now, let's think what is different about this painting from the Night Watch. Go ahead and raise your hand so your teacher can call on you. What is different about this painting than the last one called the Night Watch? Well, in this painting, we do not see any action. Also, everyone's face is clearly seen. And there are no dark shadows or imaginary people. Rembrandt highlighted in this painting the men's faces that we can see here. They have a golden light. We also see the red in the tablecloth that is highlighted here. And we can see the wall has some highlight to it. I'm wondering, do you think the cloth makers group liked this portrait? Well, if you are thinking yes, you are right. The members all approved of this portrait. They liked it because all of their faces were shown. They're all dressed alike, and it is an orderly and serious painting. Look at this self-portrait of Rembrandt. He is looking at us. It almost seems like he has been waiting for us to arrive and have our portrait painted. His gray hair shows because he is an older man now. And if you look closely at his face, we can see that he might be feeling impatient or sad or maybe lonely or serious. He showed other people's feelings as well as his own. Rembrandt continued to paint and draw right up until the end of his life, but his popularity as an artist had faded. He was very poor and lonely. Rembrandt left us his beautiful paintings full of highlights just to remember him. Here's a final look at the art words that we learned today for our master artist, Rembrandt. 
Remember that a self-portrait is a portrait of an artist that is created by him or herself. A portrait is a painting of another person. Highlight is the area where light is hitting an object. And the opposite is shadow. Shadow is the area where the light is not hitting or is being blocked by an object. This is the darker area. And the background. The background is towards the back of the painting. I hope you enjoyed learning about one of the greatest artists in history. During his lifetime, Rembrandt painted over 600 paintings and his home in Amsterdam has been turned into the Rembrandt House Museum. Wouldn't it be great to one day visit this amazing museum and see all of his awesome artwork? Up next, I can't wait to see your windmill art projects. And I hope you all have a great day. See you next time.